Today, I'm going to show you the software side of this GBF CenturyLink video intercom system. As you can see in front, there's a camera, there's a RFID reader. So once you're at the door, your guest is at the door, there's a whole list of um, apartments or uh, suite numbers. Once you select the suite number that you want, there's an option to call it. And as you can see on the phone, it will automatically open the app and alert you of the person at the door. You can either answer it or dismiss it or unlock the door as well. The version that we got is for flush mount. It looks pretty slick because the whole thing is touch interface. There's no buttons to press really. Here you can see the version that's surface mounted. I haven't actually installed yet. We have one in the house that's being programmed. So that way we can deploy it when that business building is ready. This is what the front looked like. You can either call somebody or you can enter your password to unlock the door. We prefer to program the FOBs, the RFID tags, but obviously if you don't have the tag, for instance, if you want to give your passcode to a guest, you can generate a code and then give it to the guest and then they can use that code to unlock. This is what it looks like in the back of the panel. You have an Ethernet jack. This thing works over Ethernet, by the way. There's no Wi-Fi. Well, maybe there is Wi-Fi, but we're not using Wi-Fi. We're using Ethernet jacks. CAT6 cables, to be exact. It takes 12 volts input. All of our access system is controlled by 24 volt. So we're actually using a buck converter to convert the 24 volt down to 12 volt to feed this machine. Here you have your NC, NO, COM. You can easily control your mag lock or your electric strike. And you can see that there's actually two doors. This thing can actually control up to two doors. For our purposes, we're only going to control one door. So we're just going to use this and disable this. By default, two doors is enabled. And when you press the unlock code or use the fob, it'll ask you which door to open. And sadly, there's no way to control it. You have to contact tech support and then they'll disable the second door. Otherwise, it will confuse the user if there's only one door. If you have two doors, that's fine. When you open up the cover case, this is what you would see in the back. It's basically running an Android machine. So this is the motherboard. So our 24 volt system will be using this buck converter to downscale it to 12 volt. The 12 volt will be then powering up this thing and this whole motherboard. These are the wall mounted tablets. They are running Android system as well. These tablets are Wi-Fi enabled, but we're using CAT6 again. And you can use the CAT6 to power the tablet itself as well. So there's only one single cable, one single cable to deliver data, video, as well as power straight to the tablet. Wall mounting them is extremely easy. There's a bracket. All you have to do is install the bracket first and then slide this into position over the bracket to cover up the whole thing. Very nice. Let's take a look at the software side of the whole thing. There's a website that you have to log on to control the whole thing. Once you order the Sentry Linked, you have to contact tech support, give them your Sentry Linked ID, and then they'll give you an account online associated to that ID of the Sentry Link. The Sentry Linked ID starts with GID and it's in the back of the unit. Once they activate it, go ahead and log in to the website. Clicking on Rooms Information. So in this location right here, we're setting up 26 suites for each businesses. It's actually not really apartment, it's more like each business's unit. One for haircut, one for um, massage, one for uh, spa, etc., etc. So there's 26 of them. And unfortunately, when you click on a plus icon, you cannot add them manually yourself. You have to ask tech support to add all of these accounts. Once they add the accounts in, then you can rename it to whatever you want. To edit, all you have to do is select it, checkbox, and then hit the pencil button. 
Here you can change the room label. That way it will show up on the uh, century linked. For the email, it matters, by the way. So be sure to enter the correct email address. You'll see later on why. So in this example, we're giving it sweet03 at dablet.com. Once that's done, hit submit. Now go ahead and edit all of the test account that tech support has given you to change it into the actual suite or first name and last name if you want that you'll be using at the location. And obviously, the suite number, first name and last name is not really important. What's important is the email account. On the left hand side, you can see NFC. Click on NFC for you to edit or add all of the FOBs if that's what you want for people to enter using their FOBs. The FOBs you don't have to actually get from GBF. You can just buy whatever you want from Amazon. I don't know. And it has to be 125 kilohertz standard. In the back of the FOB, you should see a bunch of numbers. That's how you add it into the system using those numbers. When you're done configuring the accounts online, it will take at least 10 minutes for the uh, century linked display to synchronize with the website actually. So while it's synchronizing, let's set up the uh, app on your phone. This app will let you configure the wall mount tablets as well. The first time you open the app, it will ask you to create an account to register an account. It's important that you're using the same email address that you just enter on the website. So, for instance, we were using suite03 at dablet.com. When you register with the app, register with the same email account. Go ahead and open the Door Dear app. On the left-hand side, click on the menu. Click on Add Device. Click on Scan Network. It's going to scan your whole local network, and it will find a CenturyLink display. There we go. Click on it and name it whatever you want. Click on Confirm. Click on OK. And there you go. You're all set. Your Century Linked display is now set. Your wall tablet is set. So is the phone app. So that way, when somebody ring the doorbell, ring the Century Linked, your phone will ring as well as the wall mounted tablet will ring. For the phone app to actually work though, you have to be subscribed to the monthly fees. If you don't care about that, that's fine. And that's the beauty of it because this thing works without any fees whatsoever. This thing doesn't care if you have internet or not. When somebody is at the Century Link and they call you, the wall tablet will ring. So you can see whoever's there at the front door, assuming you're in the same building, of course. That's one of the reasons we chose Century Link over other systems that's like uh, butterfly because butterfly requires a monthly fee no matter what and that's kind of scary because what if one day butterfly just disappear you know and then your whole system will be good as dead as you can see this is pretty good for two suite or up to 1000 suite for our purposes we're just going to install it for 26 and that's perfectly fine so far we have no issues with it during the testing phase we have yet to deploy it actually, but we love it so far for what it is. The price is very reasonable. And again, there's absolutely no monthly fee whatsoever. Hopefully you found this guide helpful. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel and thanks for watching.